Okay. Hey, everybody. I am on Instagram and Facebook Live. The Instagram camera is closer to me, but the Facebook one was good since is behind me. So I just want y'all to listen to something real quick. What I meant to was exactly. Oh my God. Sorry, this season, for example, we go places as well. Like we have an episode, as you know, like in the Latino community and the black community as well, there are a lot of things that aren't brought to the forefront yes. because people are afraid to have the conversation. Something that we constantly hear the call to action to that we feel passionate about is colorism within the Latino community. Mm -hmm. So for example, a family with five children, two of them are a lot uh, darker skinned than the other ones. And as a result, they have a different life. They're treated differently, even sometimes by their parents, you know, as or they three different. Right. And, they and we are Latinas who also experience white privilege and having that experience and, and building that bridge with our Afro-Latino brothers and sisters. So conversations that so some people might seem intimidating, but are important for us. Yeah, to we're hoping that people, you know, watch the show, you know, the episodes, and they start the conversation at home. Yes. Mm. Well, you okay? Let me tell you all the things that are wrong with this. Red Table Talk. The producers, the executive producer, spent two weeks um, with me on and off emails two lengthy conversations. The last one included my sister, Janita. Follow her. Uh, check out her company, humanitycom.com. And we were on that call for almost two hours. And then my sister was going back and forth about when I was going to fly into Miami. And the day they were supposed to fly us in, they emailed my sister to say they had gone in another direction. You know, and I had already told my sister, like, we need to be on the watch for this because I've been through it before and I've seen so many organizers, activists, act you know, like you're on these pre calls with producers, then they want another call. And then they always use this term, like picking your brain. And then you do it as an organizer and activist. Like, I don't ask for money to for interviews or that that's unethically that's not a journalistic principle and I would never do that, you know, but I'm also at a point in my life that my time is real precious. It's like the one commodity I have, right. That I can control in that sense. Anyway, their executive producer's name is Omar and the other producer's name is Michael. Y'all can find out their last names. I've never met these women, so I don't like harbor any personal or ill will to them. Um, but I, but why I wanted to come on was we as Afro, Black, Latino, Latina, Latinx identified folks here in the United States, we have to reclaim our narrative of an affirmation of Blackness. Because I'm telling you what's going on in this last two years. You go to scroll down on Instagram and even organizations that you think are progressive are posting things like Arturo Schomburg, Hispanic leader. First of all, like Schomburg would be rolling over right now if he was even called Hispanic, right? Like we are still celebrating a month essentially that erases African and indigenous Latino, Latina, Latinx people, right? You know, and it takes a long time to even get that month. With all that said, then now you have organizations and all these quote unquote, like mostly Latina influencers that are the ones that are driving the discussion. And they say that the episode is on colorism. And anytime somebody says colorism to them, the first person I bring up is Dr. Yava Blake, cause she is the expert on colorism. And y'all should get her book, One Drop. It was reissued and it has over 80 of us who identify as black in this country in different ways. You know, so, these same people are then posting articles about not erasing Afro, Black, Latino, Latina, Latinx folks, but in their own wording, in their own event title, in their own blog, in their own article, they erase us by not adding four or five simple letters, A-F-R-O or B-L-A-C-K, right? So what's driving it? Because right now, 
It's a commodity. And people in Hollywood and mainstream media and progressive circles are trying to understand how do we handle these? They're not African American. They might speak a little bit of Spanish. I see them in the hood. I don't see them in the hood. They're in hip hop. I mean, like if we take it back to hip hop, we're the Hicans are co-creators of the culture and we're consistently erased. Now, I had this experience with them. Then two weeks later, I get a call from ABC News, same thing. But this time they, they sent a crew. I spent three hours doing an interview. It was for a special that came out about a month ago tomorrow or three weeks ago tomorrow. They basically used all my words and plugged in all different type of people, famous people, um, you know, other activists. And let me just say La Bruja is in there and that's my sister. And in fact, I had hit her up like, yo, you needed to be way on that more, even if she doesn't identify as a black Puerto Rican, but that's my sister, you know, and she's always rep for her people and things like that. And it's ABC News. It's a one hour special. But what they basically did is use all my words and plug in other people. And I've been trying to understand why. And this is why. For me, saying I'm Afro or Black, let me just say, me identifying as a Black Puerto Rican woman, what that means to me, it's not just phenotype. Because then folks want to get caught up in literally the color, the lightness and all that. I understand I'm lighter skinned. What up, Rod? My homie Rod, Rod is on. Um from Earl Diaz, Rod, stars, that my blackness is also my politic. So not only do we have ABC News using all of that, a one hour special, and all they ever talked about was food, culture, and hair. And I've been pushing back on that for a long time, just like I pushed back on this with one third indigenous, one third African, one third European. Like, I'm not trying to like embrace my colonizer or the rapist in, of the women in my family. Spain is in Europe. So like, for real, like the welfare poet said, when you call me Spanish, all my purity seems to vanish because that is not who I be. My blackness, I follow the black political tradition in this country, the black radical tradition. So what they really want is Afro black, Latino, Latina, Latinx people that phenotypically look black, but actually don't have black freedom on their mind. And we know how that goes because we live in a system of white supremacy, right? So we know that the people who look like us don't necessarily have the same politics. It comes down to this. If you're a Puerto Rican that wants statehood, you're not my friend. I don't want to work with you. I don't even really want to sit next to you. So I don't care how dark or whatever, if you call yourself black Latino and you want more cops, if you're saying you're black Latina, um, but whatever, you're, you're against reproductive rights, like all of that shit, you know? And what they're now doing, it's not just about, no, I'm, I'm not going to front and be like, I'm not in my feelings a little bit. I mean, I just sat down, I spent days on the phone with, with your producers at Red Table Talk. I spent hours being interviewed for ABC News and you cut me completely out. So yeah, I'm in my feelings a little bit about that. But as an organizer, I'm like, we just keep doing the work. But what I'm not gonna allow to happen is for us to be erased and it be quiet. First of all, we have been talking about Afro-Black, particularly Puerto rican and Cuban, um, in, 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 in the United States, Schomburg was talking about this almost 100 years ago. So first, this work is not new. Second, there are a lot of us who've been identifying as Black, Dominican, Black, Puerto Rican, Black, Panamanian. What? And why do we say Black? Because that's what everybody wants to erase. But if you're out here saying, I'm just Latina, you know, like, you're good. Or I'll be the Afro-Black Latina that I'll talk about everything, all the culture, but don't deal with the politics of blackness. I'll be the black Latina that won't be in Black Lives Matter, right? This shit, we need to put a stop to it now because now that they're commodifying this and putting it into really like neat bowls and packages, the other thing is there's hundreds of us like here. 
I know I'm not the only one for sure. Like I'm an expert in a certain part of identifying as black of the diaspora of African descent, someone who found who out she, who I was, I found out who I was in college, you know, but one thing I've always done as an organizer is lift other voices up. But I'm also, like I said, I'm not going to allow all this really bullshit coming from a lot of Hollywood and mainstream media and podcasts who then want to talk about it for one day. And I'm encouraging younger Afro-Black and Latino, Latina, Latinx voices to make your voice heard. But that if we're not about a politic of black freedom, understanding that when black people are free, the rest of the world is free, we will be here constantly to remind you. I will be here. I want to uplift the younger Afro-Black, Latino, Latina, Latinx identified folks who are still fighting for space, not only on their campus, their job, the nonprofit, but fighting to be seen, to be heard in their own families. You know, so my thing is also, we got to stop letting people use us, taking our intellectual, not property, but you know, using our words, twisting them, making it sound whatever's packageable. We're not the ones that should be at tables. And like at this point, we shouldn't even have to be affirming who we are. Because there is no, quote, larger Latinx culture without African and indigenous people. Everything comes from our ancestors, you know. But as someone who has been working on this for 20 years and getting my PhD, I'm also not going to let a bunch of people disrespect me. I'm not going to let a bunch of white men, white Latinas, white Latino men be the drivers of the discussion. And I also encourage particularly like African-American organizers, activists, and leaders, like, yo, reach out to the people in Puerto Rico, in Panama, in Cuba, in the Dominican Republic, uplift People, yes, like Steve Canal that created Pose for us, but there's so many of us, you know, and it's, it's, it's messed up. It's, it's messed up that I got used by Red Table Talk, by other, quote, women of color, and I also got used by two women of color at ABC News, and this is what I mean. When women of color come to me, my first instinct is to say yes. That's what we do. And then you realize every sister is not a sister. Every brother is not a brother. Every trans person is not a trans. You have good politics. Every queer person doesn't have good politics. And I'm not going to be the one that's silent about it. With that said, there's a lot of books out there that younger Afro-Black, Latino, Latina, Latinx identify folks. We also have to be very mindful right now in Hollywood, as their space being broken, mainstream media being widened a little bit, that we don't fight just for ourselves, that we fight for our community, our ideas, our values, our ethics. In that space, that's more activism. The hardcore organizers out here know that identity is critically important, but that identity doesn't override the politic, the identity of self can never override the black politic, you know? So just go tomorrow and do a cursory, you know, Latinx hashtag thing, and you will see exactly what I'm talking about. And until we start not calling people out, I mean, obviously I'm doing that, <laughs> but part of this is this is accountability, you know, if not, in five years, these same people are now going to write the documentaries and the stories and the commercials and the books where they insert the word Afro-Black as a word, but not as a movement, not as a people, not as a politic. So I'm going to, I showed you all one drop. 
I'm just going to pick, like, I have a bunch of books. It's just better for me to put them on pictures, which I will do that tomorrow. But uh, this, to me, diasporic blackness is so important. Talks about Schomburg um, and his life. Old school, Willy Pedomo, who was one of the first poets I ever heard use the term black Puerto Rican. Um, his first book, Where Nickel Calls a Dime. Then Raquel Rivera, who is, was and is still to this day, is the only person that has written a book on what she calls New Yorkans, right? But Puerto Ricans who are co-creators of, of hip hop. It's a classic. And if you pick it up right now, you would actually think things haven't changed, but they have. They move forward a little bit. Um, let me see what else. Oh, Slave Revolts in Puerto Rico. Uh, of course, Pan-Africanism, because that's the ideology and the politic. Uh, not if pure blood, the free people of color and racial prejudice in 19th century Puerto Rico. Uh, I'll do one more. Uh, oh no, hold on. I'll do uh, the borders of Dominican Nadit, like La Afro Latinidad, Dominican Nadit. That <laughs> this is good, you know, makes you really understand um, and push back against that narrative that Dominicans are anti-black, that Latin Afro Black Latina folks are anti-black. Scenes of empire, race, and radicalism in Puerto Rico in the United States. These are just some of the books I'm using um, in my dissertation. You know, so listen, I'm about to tag them up and I hope that one of them reads it. I hope that Gloria Stefan, uh, her daughter and her sister-in-law read it. And I hope they find a bunch of Afro black, Latina, Latina, Latinx folks that are younger. And I'm willing to give them a lot of names because younger people need to be in this discussion and need to be the forefront. And I have to be mindful of not monopolizing space, but I'm also not going to be written out of something I've worked hard for 30 years, which is my life's work. You know, and um, as many people get called experts on issues, I am an expert on this issue. So to use my 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 work, my time to kind of play me. I feel kind of stupid because I should have known better. All of that, it, all these episodes are done. You know, they are going to be what they're going to be. But that's why I'm trying to create different things uh, in a space for a lot of us. And I'm getting closer and closer to that goal. And part of it is that I've been digging deeply into into what I want to leave behind and digging deeply into making sure that no matter what space I'm in, that I'm mentoring younger people to come and take that space. I don't ever think you get old enough to leave a movement if you say that you're not an organizer. But I think there comes a time in our lives where someone like me, the hip hop generation, almost about to be 50, also has to take a step back and bring younger people forward, mentor them, learn from them, be quiet and listen. With all that said, I'm always ready to have a debate or a talk of all of that. And I will do that as well, you know? But for real, I'm about to hit them up. Like this is ridiculous. Cause if they did this to me, that means they've done it to other people. And they will continue to do it to other people until we put a stop to that, you know? And for me, this is my, like, now you don't cross a boundary and it's way bigger than one person. It's way bigger than one conversation. And we really need to stop saying, I'm so glad we're starting the conversation. We've been discussing this ever since Africans were taken from the continent. Okay. We've been fighting to be free all over the world before any of this existed. And you know what? We're not going anywhere. No matter how much they try to erase us, we're just going to come back harder. And, you know, as they say, steel sharpens steel. You know, but get some books, pass this on, put a tweet out there, make your own podcast. 
you know, we have to be self-determining at this point. These people are not going to tell our stories because ultimately they don't want what is racial equity and racial justice. They don't want that. To them, this is a game. To us, it's our lives. To them, this is an episode. To us, this is how we live every day and how we fight erasure, how we resist, and how we stand up. Peace, everybody.